Hi Joseph. Hi Sapras. Uh, you know about this famous iPhone antenna problem? Yeah, uh, I've read about it and I thought a little bit about it. So could you explain me? Because I never experienced this problem before with any other mobile phones. Why it's so frequent with the iPhone 4? Okay, let's uh, let's do that. So you have uh, you have the phone about here, right? Yes. And there, uh, yes. What we all know is the problem comes about here because about here is the antenna, and that is where really the kind of problem starts. What we did is we, we looked a little bit into Apple's explanation, and Apple t simply tells us then, well, you know, we have a hundred million dollar building, and that hundred million dollar building is is solving all our problems, and I always feel that well. You may have lots of money, but if you don't put the right expertise in, then you have a kind of problem. So I, I'd like to make a very short introduction to antenna theory. An antenna theory, very short, is like an antenna, doesn't matter how it looks like, is always going to be fed by a cable. We have a cable in here, and the cable connects to the antenna. Talking about the antenna, you have two parts of the antenna. One part is what we call the antenna diagram, which simply means how is an antenna radiating? Into which direction is the energy going out? The second part, which is equally important, is basically the matching, I would call it the, the input impedance, the matching of the cable towards the antenna. And now, comes the real story of the iPhone. If you put your finger or any tissue on this antenna, well, let's, let's try to draw that. You put a big thumb here on the antenna. Assume this is your thumb. What is happening? First, your S11 is going to be completely changed into a new S11. And second, your diagram is like mismatched and it will perhaps only radiate like that. Now what is, it, what is S11 about? S11 is simply telling you how much of the energy goes into the antenna so, and how much is coming back. Now in a real good antenna design and this is the, the original design, you would see that only a minimum part which would go back in, uh, into the antenna because most of the energy you would simply feed out to the antenna. If you put another tissue on top of it, whether that's uh, a thumb or anything else, you would change this and a lot more energy will come out. So instead of radiating, let me say 0.8 watts, you will suddenly only radiate like 0.1 watt because the rest of the energy is simply going back. So that is the first problem. The second problem is actually the problem of the antenna game, as I demonstrated here, meaning the antenna is not pointing where it should point. It's, it's radiating somewhere else. Apple is only explaining this part of the antenna pattern. They never ever talk about input impedance. So now let's see why is the bumper, why is this antenna case, the antenna bumper, why does it help us? Let's jump to the next slide. Let's assume this is, the, this is our antenna, and if we put the finger in here, then we have exactly this problem of both input impedance and antenna gain. Now whenever I put a little bit of a distance on top of it, whenever I put some air between, then I will always allow energy to come out and at the second time the mismatch to the antenna is getting a lot less. Actually tells you how good does the antenna fit to the feeding line and if we say that we have, here we have the frequency that we have an operating frequency, which is like, for example, the GSM band or the UMTS band, 
then uh, what we will see that the antenna fits extremely well under normal conditions. And now comes the story where our finger comes in. And if the finger is really placed very close to the antenna, then what we will recognize is that this input impedance will maybe look like that. Meaning there isn't really any, any more fit of the antenna towards it. Now, the solution from Apple is, I would say, a good fix, a quick fix. It doesn't solve really the problem of the, of the antenna, but uh, it solves at least uh, the radiation problem. So what does Apple say? Well, we put a bumper on top of it, and the bumper is a case which we put around the whole iPhone. Now, while putting the bumper around the iPhone, what do we do? Well, we create some air here in between the antenna and the finger, because the finger will be just outside here. So by putting the finger at a distance from it, then we can say that with a bumper, we can actually make sure that we have a little bit of a better fit. We will still not get the undisturbed fit. So it's always better to keep your fingers off. But we will get a, be a better fit and that means all in all a better antenna propagation. The last question is why is the bumper better than the finger? And that has a lot to do with the structure of the, f of the skin. First, if you use a bumper then you always have to some air and you have to have some rubber material. Both air and rubber material have almost no water, and water is an absorber, meaning they don't disturb the antenna signal so much. If you, however, take the finger, then we know that in the finger we have a lot of water. And water is about the best thing to absorb antennas. Not to tell you that if you throw your, uh, your phone in the, uh, in the washing, then it won't work at all. But that is another problem. So thanks, thanks for having followed me on this uh, small lecture on antenna theory and the iPhone 4. And if you want to read more, go to unique.no, where we have some lectures on antenna theory. Bye-bye.